Hey Caps, wait, welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot. Um, Caps, I've been working with your energy for a little bit and um, I think really what I want you to know is that what you're going through and the loads that you're carrying, they are big. You know, and I really want to acknowledge that for you. It's, you know, I think Capricorns get so used to carrying the stress and the burdens for a lot of other people in their lives. That that's kind of the Capricorn journey. Um. So, I think you get really used to having these heavy burdens, and then when they get even harder to handle or more than what you're capable of handling, which is a lot. Um, you tend to start to spin out of control, but God knows you're not going to ask for any help. <laughs> and you're probably not going to communicate it about it either, right? Like you've got Neptune going through your third. So it's very hard for you to ask for help. It's very hard for you to, um, you know, even if people are offering help, you may not be seeing, seeing that clearly. Um, and that could be making you feel a little bit alone or disconnected, um, or, you know, like it's just too much, it's too much of a burden. And so I kind of did a layout where I wanted to go through, we're getting towards the, uh, you know, the beginning of January, 2020. So I'm going to do a full monthly spread for you guys. This isn't just the eclipse energy. Um, however, once I laid out the cards, it's quite apparent when the eclipse occurs. So what I want to start off by telling you guys is right now, it's all about self-love. Like it's really, truly Capricorns first and foremost. It is about self-love, knowing your worth, and um, setting boundaries like really draw those lines and, and there's no reason to wait. You know it, you know there may be too much on your plate, right? Jupiter just swept through your 12th house. It unleashed a whole bunch of crap, uh, expanded your mind a little bit. You started to understand things from a, maybe a spiritual perspective in a way and uh, now you're starting to take that out. You're starting to take that out into the real world, right? Jupiter's now in your sign. It's on your sun or it's on your ascendant and people are seeing you different and people are probably wanting more from you. You know, that is the burden of carrying Jupiter and you can ask the Sanchez that just went through it. It's not like Jupiter goes to your sign and a bunch of money just lands on your doorstep. No, it also brings a lot more responsibility and it brings a lot more discipline, especially in Capricorn. It just brings a lot more of what are you, whatever you've got cooking. So, you know, I mean, if you are a Capricorn who has been manifesting train wrecks in their life, then Jupiter is going to come and bring you a whole shitload of train wrecks until you get it right, until you correct your mistakes. And that's what Saturn and Pluto are doing right now. They're correcting all of our mistakes. So your first week out, we got this. So my guess is maybe on the solar eclipse in your sign, something occurred that really gave you all the information to put all the pieces together, to really get a clear perspective. You know, this is, this is clarity. And sometimes it's looking at something from a different perspective and then finding a new understanding of it. It's just that simple. Maybe you just decided to look at something differently and found enlightenment and, and empowerment. But whatever it was, it made you feel like you needed to defend or protect yourself. And again, this is that theme of forming those boundaries right now. And, you know, you can't juggle all of this stuff. You, the, the pentacles are dropping. You're starting to lose control. One person can't do all of this. And it's okay to admit that. This is actually, you know, this, it looks messy, but I really see building towards strength. I really see self-love 
putting yourself first. I see this in that first week. But then we move to the second week and it is my belief that the Cancer Eclipse on January 10th in your seventh house is gonna bring you an entirely different experience. And this eclipse is on the North Node. And that's supposed to lead us to our, our paths, our destinies, where we're meant to take our next steps in this year guiding us towards that emotional enlightenment and the letting go that occurred with, oh my God, Pluto in the South Node. Like, believe me, Capricorns, you have been going through it. You really have. This whole side of the Zodiac, it's just like one rapid karmic lesson after another. It's like kind of taking a beating. And this Cancer Eclipse although it could be extremely emotional, um, I think it's, it's going to bring that final, you know, it's going to bring finality to whatever was left that you weren't willing to let go of. Let's say it that way. Yeah. So you got the, the five of cups here. And this is my card of somebody who's a little stuck in the past. And by a little, I mean immovable. And somebody who's staring at their regrets and, and what they wish they had done differently. And this could be somebody feeling this way about you. Um, but either way, it's, it's an energy that's unpleasant. Um, and sometimes I see this card as a card of an addict or a um, someone struggling with deep, dark depression, wrestling their own kind of dark night of the soul area. And this apparently is going to uh, affect you, whether that's your energy or someone else's. And then I'm seeing major lack of stability here. Now it's just this one week. Honestly, it really is just this one week. So you just got to kind of hang in there and navigate those emotions and be strong in yourself, which is why that first week, that self-love, rest, the boundaries, the take care of you time is so important because there could be some real emotional skeletons that come out of this closet in this lunar eclipse. And again, it is going to, you know, it could be somebody's not willing to put in the work. Somebody's not willing to do the work to fix themselves. You're not willing to, you know, again, I'm seeing like the mental health issues or depression and uh, no longer feeling like you could help that person. And, you know, realizing that by putting so much work into another person's issues, um, has kind of made your life extremely unstable. And we really can't have that for Capricorns right now because you guys you guys have been going through this energy for a long time where the rest of the zodiac kind of just like they just kind of hit the traffic jam, you know? Like you were there first, you were at the beginning, you've been following this and it's been slowly increasing in intensity. And, and it's a little bit of that immovable feeling, but you've been behind it the whole time and it's just been kind of slowly taking its toll on you, slowly working through you to change you and change the things that can't uh, come into this next cycle. Saturn and Pluto, this is cycle. This is a 37 year cycle. This is like stepping into, you know, the next 40 years of your life. So it's a really good time to kind of take a look at what you did want what you didn't want, what you did to cause the things that you didn't want, and how to correct it. It's it's that's all our assignment is right now. And in the end it will be you guys. It will be our Capricorns that are that light, that hope, that first man up the mountain showing us the way. I really believe that. Um so Capricorns need to be strong. And they really do need to set those boundaries because the responsibilities they're about to get, uh, the, the way they're about to change their lives, it's going to really require a lot of focus and determination and 
that's Jupiter in Capricorn. That's Jupiter with you, with your Saturn. And Saturn's going to move into Aquarius, and it's going to open your mind. You know, this is kind of a spiritual awakening phase. So maybe if this is you coming out of the dark night of the soul or realizing you're going to have to put in some work to get through those mental traumas and heal from them before you take your next steps, uh, that's really important to reflect right now. And know yourself. Talk to people. Get that therapy. Share what you need to share. Um, and actually, when I was preparing to do yours, I really I haven't felt this way in years I had such a knot, like a lump in my throat. And so Capricorn, whatever it is that you're holding in, if you're not defending yourself, if you are if you just keep taking, you know, a horrible boss's crap at work and you keep your mouth shut and you just keep your nose to the grindstone, like you have to draw that boundary. You have to stick up, speak up for yourself. Speak up and let other people know what you're going through. Let them know how much you're carrying. Ask for help. Ask for help. It won't make you less of a human being, Capricorn. We all think you're amazing. We all think that you are the reliability and stability that we couldn't live without. So if you need us to do something, I'm pretty sure every single person is going to say yes. I'm sure that with gratitude... They will help you because you were always there for everybody else. And that's Capricorn. And Capricorns are, they're like, you know, the CEOs, but they're still like, they have the ability to be really warm and close in friendships and, uh, and be a rock for people, a real rock. And that's pretty much what we're relying on to get us through this first half of 2020. So get it right, Capricorn. Figure that stuff out and don't ignore it. Because here's what's going to happen in the third week. You start that with an Ace of Pentacles. But here's my concern. We got the Wheel of Fortune as well. And it's upside down. With the Judgment card. So here's why I need you to know that going into that first week of that self-love and that setting boundaries is so important. Get yourself strong because that, sick, that second week something hits and you have to get yourself into a place where you do not lose your manifestation. Do not let those deep, horrible, self-loathing, mindset or you know self-limiting beliefs don't let that creep in now not now Capricorn not now because Cappies you got an opportunity you got an opportunity that's really stable okay a gift something coming in that could quite literally change your life okay it could be that whatever comes in in week three you turn down and that's okay. Here's why it's okay. Because coming into week four and when you have judgment backing up that wheel of fortune, it, you know, this could be a past love coming back and you're like, oh, a hell no. And that's great. You know, that might have been a test from the universe and they said, all right, it's time to move on to the next level. Let's move on to this. <laughs> Let's stop hitting them with the same lesson over and over. And let's get on to the next one because it doesn't stop. It never stops, right? But here's what I'm saying. Fourth week. High Priestess. Coming out of rest. Taking the blindfolds off, right? Focusing on your intuition. So if this comes back in week three... And you know, you know, solar plexus energy, masculine, feminine energy balanced, and you, and you don't, I tell everybody, don't react, observe, and then intelligently respond, okay? Don't react to situations. Because it's going to be that intuition and that inner wisdom that tells you to turn that down 
and by turning down something that is is uh beneath you you know something that you've risen above already you don't have to do this lesson again that's going to be the moment when you know you're ready to move on ready to move on Because the bottom of the deck, six of swords. So I feel like this is kind of a the culmination of the story. You know, we're closing out these eclipses. We have six eclipses in 2020. Uh, it's going to be insane for a whole other set of reasons. It won't be always on the uh, Cancer Capricorn axis. We're actually moving into the Gemini Sag axis. Uh, interestingly enough, that will be moving on to hit you in your 6th and 12th house. So if you didn't have enough fun in that 12th house recently, brace yourself because we're moving to the next level. And also with that north node moving into Gemini, and again, some of the stuff that I'm picking up, um, really important to focus on your health. When something comes in and hits you in your 6th house, it's going to be a need to address or change your self-care, your routines, your diet, your medications, uh, your just day-to-day -day schedule, and it could affect your job, you know? Uh, it could affect your pets. There could be a lot of sixth house action going on, along with the twelfth house. That also makes for a pretty impactful year. All right, so I want to pull a couple cards, a couple clarifiers for each week. Let me see. What, what do my Capricorns need to understand about the first week in January? Cappies need to know about first week in January. Yeah. Okay. caps so this first week we've got the hangman we've got the seven of wands uh, we've got the two of pentacles we have the magician reversed and the four of cups so this tells me whatever happens here you come at it with a little bit of a new perspective again like I said whatever happened back in the cancer I'm sorry, in the Capricorn solar eclipse or even the Gemini full moon, there may have been a jarring situation or a shocking event that kind of really changed your perspective and you were able to come at information or these situations um, with a different perspective on things, maybe one that you've never really had before. Maybe you've decided once in your life to stand up for yourself which I do very much see with that seven of wands. You decide to stand up for yourself. And, you know, like I said, that two of pentacles, it's like I, I can't juggle this anymore. I can't do this. I'm living two separate lives or I'm just handling too much. Uh, but when this pops up, the magician in reverse, it's like you're taking a stand against somebody or maybe even several people uh, that are manipulating this is a very manipulative energy to me. You know, when I see it upright, it's like, all right, you've got the tools, you've got everything you need to accomplish, manifest. This is manifesting power. But when it's upside down, 
you know, it's just manipulation. It's, it's somebody, again, I, I sense taking you for granted. And, you know, I'm picking up on this. The universe is really delivering these swift lessons to us, rapid lessons in this eclipse season. That's what it's all about is a rebalancing. So we're going through some big karmic things in our lives. And I feel like by putting an end to that manipulative situation, the universe is going to bring you a gift. And it's going to be really unexpected. And you got to keep your eyes and ears open open for this one okay honestly like look for it look for it in the little places look for it in the small talk and the small conversations or just the thoughts that you have you know we're getting a lot of spiritual enlightenment at this time in our lives that's what this Capricorn conjunction is all about is really achieving this really high standard of spiritual wisdom within our lives and of course you could read a million books you could go to church every day whatever your belief system is until you learn the lessons yourself you don't really understand them right let's clarify that second week i really feel like if you are moving away yeah, if you are moving away from people or things that are manipulating you or causing you to feel like you need to conform and not be yourself, something that's holding you back or dimming your light, you know, in that first week, I feel like you're going to pass that test with flying colors. I think Capricorns aren't putting up with shit anymore. I think they realize they've got too many people and too many things depending on them. And some stuff's just got to go. The nonsense has got to go. Another card for Cappies for the second week. caps brace yourself for the second week okay brace yourself because i think i think this is some pretty jarring news coming in which again would not surprise me with that um with that eclipse in the second week So in this energy, I really feel like there's a major loss of stability. There's a major hit in your life. Caps, I mean, it's going to be okay. And this could, again, be someone that you're involved with or someone in your energy. A, like I said, a business partner, a spouse, a best friend, a child. But I feel like you're getting news you're getting the truth about how severe an addiction or a depression truly is in someone around you i don't feel like this is you i feel like this is um this is someone in your energy and i really feel like this person is just feeling like given up they just can't do it anymore you know, this is, this is sad. It's such a loss of stability and it could even be a loss of a home or a loss of a dream. You know, of, of having a home. There's definitely a lot of grief and sadness in here. I mean, even in my hands, my hands feel sad. <laughs> It's such a weird thing to say. <laughs> I know, but if you can understand the flow of energy, then you can understand that. Um, 
It's heavy. It's heavy. I don't want to scare anybody. Again, this just could be news of somebody around you that's maybe losing their home. Um, their wife is leaving them because of an addiction or you know, a depression. That's what I'm seeing with those. And then let's put some clarifiers on that week three. All right, and so bottom of the deck is that second week, guys, again, with the self-love. Like, if things are really, really emotional in your life, do not be afraid to ask help. Do not be afraid to ask for a shoulder to cry on or a hot cup of tea and to talk to somebody, you know, talk through it. That Queen of Cups... Take care of you. Take care of those emotions. You know, sometimes in life, in caps, this is definitely applies to you. You just want to get on with it. Like, okay, I learned that lesson. I'm not going to lay around and be sad about it. Let's just move on with our lives because that's what feels right. As I'm saying this, the temperance, the alchemy of life, right? If you don't really allow yourself to sit with the emotions, to be in the emotion, to really allow yourself to feel that loss, well, then you can't fill back up with positive emotion. You know, if you keep everything all bottled inside, there's no flow, you can't get over it, and then you can't invite the new things in your life. So you really have to take the time, no matter how many other things are going on, no many, it doesn't matter what you've got going on. You just have to take the time to take care of yourself and to take care of your heart because it matters, Cappy. Your heart matters too. All right, let's clarify this third week because I feel like this is positive, which is odd with that wheel of fortune in reverse, but I just don't think that's yours. I don't think it's yours that's in reverse. <laughs> what I say? That's what I'm saying. I think whatever's going on in week three... Yeah, I want to pull one more card on that. I like the good stuff. I'll stay here all day. All right, a couple different messages here, okay? Here's bottom of the deck. No longer feeling trapped. So what's going on in week three is you start to realize that you're in a karmic loop. Welcome to life. At least you know. I don't know if this is a relationship with somebody, someone in your family, somebody at work. I don't know. But it seems to me like somebody just keeps coming in and coming out. Coming in and coming out on their terms full of uh, excuses and with a severe lack of empathy, okay? So this person might have been someone that appeared to be solid, something that appeared to be like a solid foundation. This would go one of, one of two ways. I'm getting two different solid messages here, so please, if it doesn't apply to you, don't make it fit. And honestly, like, you could feel in these readings, if I'm talking to you, you, you'll know. You'll feel tingly. You'll recognize it. I'll say some things that resonate with you, and you'll know. Don't ever try to make it fit. I can't possibly read for every single person that's watching this. So this is just a story that spirit needs these people to know, and if it doesn't belong to you, then check out some of the other signs. I find a lot of times that your Venus and your Moon We'll talk to you a lot when you're searching for love advice. Um, and I also find that your sun sign is good for your career and money. Okay, so this may not be your message because what I'm picking up here is pretty specific. 
So there could have been this person that appeared to be a really solid foundation, right? Um, but they weren't. You realize they weren't. And these people were stuck in this karmic loop as well. And the bottom line is you knew, and I'm jumping in a week four here, I know, but you knew intuitively this wasn't right because you did not feel the emotions there. This was like more of a business transaction. And look, the outcome, Ten of Pentacles, right? It's great. Ten of Pentacles is great. Um, it's great in a job. It's great in a career. It's it's great in a relationship. Don't get me wrong. But when you got all these pentacles and an empty ace of cups, it's like they couldn't deliver emotionally. You didn't connect emotionally. And quite honestly, probably because they didn't have anything to give. You know, this could be um, a narcissist in your life or somebody that just completely lacks empathy. And I see that because when I see that come out with that Knight of Swords, I feel like this person could watch you be in agony, be in stress to this person can, you know, watch you emotionally suffering and really just not give a shit. And so you just, it just seems so cold. It seems so cold. And this judgment card is either you saying enough is enough. You know, I've had enough. I'm walking away and I deserve better. I really hope that's what I'm seeing here. And then I feel like with all of that, if you, if you give up, you know, if you make the correct judgment call and you're not staying up all night crying over this person that obviously cannot put in the emotional maturity that you can, then you start to realize that it's time for you to obtain your own Ten of Pentacles, right? So it's a little reflection on some maybe deep codependency issues that maybe you didn't even realize. And you have to understand that wanting somebody to be there for you emotionally is not codependent, okay? That's wanting a healthy and good relationship. So if and when you are dealing with any kind of a narcissistic energy, they will tell you, oh, you're so needy, oh, you're so... And you will question yourself. You might believe it. But at the end of the day... We all deserve like that warm spot, that home, that person we could tell anything to, that person that after a shitty day, you just want to kind of come home and crawl in their arms and, and then everything's all better. So don't deny yourself of that because somebody's saying you're clingy or you're insecure, okay? It's all up to us to check our own issues. Do you feel like you have codependency issues? Check it. Now's your time. Judgment. Check that shit at the door. Don't bring it into your next relationship. Don't bring it into this relationship. But if it's not your codependency issues and it's their complete and utter lack of empathy issues, dude, walk the hell away. You can't save that. You can't fix that. And you know better. You know you deserve better. And then moving into week four. Cappy, cappy, cappies. I feel like moving into week four, you really are tapping into that intuition. I feel like you're starting to really believe in yourself. That's awesome. There we go. Yeah. Oh, Cappies. This is good stuff. This is great. <sighs> Look at that. All right. So by week four of January, I feel like you're getting ready to move on. Okay. Um, 
I mean, if you've been broken up for a week or two, don't jump on dating websites. Like, don't take that toxic energy and, you know, roll it around in the mud. There's no need for that. And really, I, I'm picking up on this feeling like you do not need to go in search of love, okay? I think this is something that you're starting to realize is just going to come naturally to you when your heart is in the right place, and your mind is in the right place, and you feel really secure, and you're full of that self-love, then it just finds you, right? It just shows up at your door. You don't have, you don't have to do internet dating or any of that nonsense. It never ends out well. Um, so you got this high priestess. So it's like you're relying on this intuition and you're coming out of rest. You're kind of, the fog is starting to lift, okay? Starting to feel like you want to move again. This could have been, you know, working through this eclipse season. This is really heavy emotional stuff. So if you took the first three weeks in January to just kind of process and take it easy on yourself, that's that's great. Do it. That's a responsible thing to do because you know again it's like you've made a decision you're removing the blindfold you're not you're gonna stop ignoring the red flags this has been a big theme for my readings okay and you're gonna know your value and you're going to want this queen of cups you're gonna want somebody comes coming at you you know who is emotionally available, who is nurturing. This starts to become a priority in your life. In Capricorn, cancer in your seventh house, how could it not be? How could you go around with a cancer in your seventh house dating narcissists and douchebags because you need that emotional nurturing relationship more than anybody? more than anyone. You work so hard, you know, you just like, you know, you're the boss. You just handle everything and you don't mind that. But at the end of the day, you just want somebody to just wrap their arms around you and tell you you did a good job and tell you they love you. And then every day of hard work is just so worth it, right? So you can't settle for less than that. You just can't. And you can't go into relationships where you immediately feel like you have to be emotionally strong. And you don't have to tame their beasts, okay? Listen to me here. Strength is a taming of the beast. It's when somebody has full control over their primal energies over their bad choices over their emotional insecurity you know strength is just really self-control and self-mastery okay but when we're talking about other people and it comes up opposite it's like you don't have to feel responsible for that anymore you don't have to carry that burden of somebody who isn't willing to do this themselves you can't do it for them okay like, you need someone you could be soft with, someone you could trust. Someone that, I mean, stop. It's great. Like, you've maybe you've been through so many horrible relationships that you consider yourself, like, the biggest badass in the world. But it's just not what you need. It's just not. And then that hermit. At the bottom of the deck, just a little bit in interesting because I just think this is the overall theme of your reading is like, you're gonna keep getting these karmic lessons until you clear them out. So stop putting yourself through it and just kind of go within and seek some comfort and solace in yourself. Guys, like today, today you have the south node on the sun. And on your sun or on your ascendant or on your moon or whatever you're watching it for, like 
that's a big deal. These are all periods of like really letting go. And although in the 3D, it may appear like we're letting go to a relationship or it might appear like we're letting go to a job or a situation that doesn't serve us anymore. But that comes from a place where you're also letting go the mental blockages or the limiting self-beliefs that kept you there in the first place. So it is so much about your thought processes and clearing them out and getting them clean because now you start to realize that what you're feeling on the inside is what you're getting on the outside. So you may have to step it up emotionally too. You may have to learn how to be a little bit more vulnerable in relationships, not protect yourself. Sometimes, sometimes people can get so afraid of being vulnerable that they almost gravitate to an energy of someone who's emotionally unavailable because then they, it's not their fault that they don't have to be emotional, right? They don't have to be intimate. They don't have to connect with someone so deeply because you know it'll never emotionally fulfill you, but it won't be your fault. Yeah, Cavs don't do that anymore. This 2020 is going to be amazing for Capricorns. Like, you guys are just getting powerful. It's like putting your brain through, like, this drastic, like, I don't know, MMA workout or something daily. Like, just really putting your soul through it, ready to empower all that you've learned, ending dealing with shitty people, shitty karmic contracts you had to wrap up in your life. The bear. Cappies. The bear. First of all, I have always wanted one. I want a pet bear. And I know that sounds unrealistic, but I can dream. And I think they're adorable. I got this for another sign. I can't remember which one. I don't, I don't oftentimes don't remember any of these readings after I do them. Bear, waking from spiritual slumber, beginning anew. After a long winter, the bear arises from deep slumber. At first, the movement and effort are difficult, but the bear knows it's time to awaken and move toward the dawning light. The bear card represents an individual on the cusp of new directions and personal transformation, the initial weeks and months of the spiritual quest may feel tricky, cumbersome, and full of obstacles, but you have no choice, Bear. Winter wanes, the warmth of spring emerges, and your transformation begins. I really love that for you. When in balance, inner strength, yearning to grow. When out of balance, withdraw lethar lethargy and heaviness. And to bring into balance, movement and exercise. You guys might have been the only sign that I didn't really cover that enough with. Move your body. The only way to break up all of this dense earth energy is to just move your body. Get out there. Go dance and do something crazy. No, don't do anything crazy during eclipse sign. Don't do anything crazy. Keep it real on New Year's, guys. Stay safe. Um, it's kind of a sad New Year's. It's just kind of a sad, reflective. It doesn't have to be sad, but kind of like just stay at home with your loved one. Curl up under a blanket. Have some good wine, you know. And it's, just, it's just not a party energy. All right, Cappies. We'll be talking soon. Love you. Bye.